What's up my friends, today I'm going to show you how I turn this ship in a bottle style bottle into a terrarium complete with a shipwreck. This video is going to differ from my usual content as I want to show you every step. So grab a drink, get comfortable and enjoy. I bought the bottle from a local flea market. It's pretty old and when I tried to pull the cork out the end snapped off so the first thing I have to do is get that cork out. Because the cork has pretty much rotted away, I opted to push it into the bottle and then remove it with some tweezers. Now that's out, it's time to make the soil. Molar clay is one of my favourite materials to use because it's so porous and great at holding onto moisture. It's a fantastic addition to your soil mix. Into the container goes two scoops of molar clay. The next material going into the substrate is coir. Imagine the outer husks of a coconut. Coir is just a ground down version of that. It's airy, water retentive and holds its structure for a long time. In goes two scoops of coir. Now without putting too fine a point on it, this is worm poo. It's a wonderful addition to our soil mix because unlike molar clay and coir, it has a nutritional value. So it's very important to add this. In goes two scoops of worm castings. I pruned a mulberry tree in my garden a few weeks back. I dried the leaves and saved them to use in terrariums. I feel that adding leaf litter into your terrariums is a wise thing to do because it will help feed those microbes that come in from the worm castings. And if you decide to add microfauna like I will later, then it provides a long-term food source for them. Give the whole thing a thorough mix and that's the soil complete. I really didn't like the colour of the stand, so I bought a can of black acrylic spray paint and gave it a single coat, and I think it looks much better like this. Getting the soil through a tiny opening can be frustrating, and I find it's best to use a funnel. As the terrarium will be laid horizontally in the stand, I rotate the bottle and spread the soil out along the bottom. The bottle also has some writing imprinted on the glass, so I make sure that this is at the back. Before I spray the soil with water, I use a long chopstick to gently pat the soil down, removing any air pockets in the mix. There is filtered water in this bottle, and I carefully spray the soil until it's at a near optimum level of moisture. I then wipe the dirt and water droplets off the side so I can see what I'm doing. This bit can be a little bit difficult if you don't have slanted tweezers, but it's important to clear the glass so I can see what I'm doing when I start to plant the terrarium, which is of course my favourite part. This Wardian case is about a year old now and I spy a Nephrolepis fern that I want to use. I split the fern into smaller pieces and attempt to place them at the back of the bottle which is actually harder than it looks. But between a chopstick and two pairs of tweezers I eventually get the fern in place and firm the soil around it to help it root better. Because I want to add a very precious cutting in this terrarium I want to make sure that it sits upright so I'm going to make a small pile of lava rocks that will sit around the cutting. Now this terrarium is one of my favourites. I made it for the Chelsea Flower Show so it's only a few months old but it contains Philodendron Mini Santiago which is sat in a bed of Vesicularia Montagni which is also known as Christmas Moss. I take a small cutting and place it in between the lava rocks. Again this is harder than it looks because the stem is quite soft but I persisted and eventually got there. Because this is going to have a shipwreck vibe, I want something that resembles a tree in there. Pilea Hitchcockii is larger leaf than Pilea depressor or Pilea glauca, and to help it fit, I take some of the larger leaves off before it goes in. I place it at the back of the bottle, and now let's move on to some moss. Now 
This is a small bioactive terrarium and I noticed that the naughty creatures have been nibbling the moss inside. So I'm going to remove the clumps and place them in our new terrarium around the plants that are already in there. So that's the back end of the terrarium done and now I'm going to add a few small pieces of wood for added interest. I expect that these will mould quite quickly but that's normal and it's rarely a cause of concern. We'll be adding springtails later on anyway. This plant is called Margravia Poyo. I don't use Margravias often but these have been sat in my prop box for a few months now and I feel that they deserve to get into some nice soil. I carefully remove the sphagnum and place them around the hardscape features, knocking them over in the process. Trying to get plants in place with such a small opening can be difficult. I find it's best to plant some good music and try to remain calm during the whole process. Thankfully, my gravias take to cuttings nice and easily, so once these grow, I'll be sure to nip a few pieces out. This is Begonia Dodsonii. It's a vigorous grower and I've had much success growing it over the past few years. It's tolerance of lower light levels and turns a deep purple if the conditions are right. I take a few cuttings and place them front and centre because I love this plant so much. And I'm going to give a shout out now to Neotropic Treasures, my friend John, because pretty much every rare plant I have comes from him. So do me a favour, head to my description and give John a follow on Instagram. I'd be really happy leaving the terrarium like this, but because it's meant to be a ship in a bottle, I feel I'd be doing the bottle justice by creating some sort of scene, albeit a loose one. So I place some sand near the bottle's opening to resemble a beach, and I think this actually looks quite cool. My friend CJ from Bantam Earth sent me loads of cool 3D printed figurines, and if you'd like some of your own, use this code for a discount on his website. The link is in the description. I managed to squish the sails a little by putting it in the bottle, but it's a shipwreck, so I feel that's fitting. And actually, I think this looks quite realistic. Microfauna time. Bilobella Braunerae from Micro Exotics are the coolest springtails that I've ever seen. So let's place them in this bottle and let them play in this shipwreck scene as their new home. They're fascinating little creatures that act as a cleanup crew, consuming any mold, fallen leaves or decaying plant matter. They then go to the toilet and help keep the plants fed, though as they're tiny, their poops are too, so that isn't their main function. Something else I've noticed is that they like to burrow in the soil. This is helpful because it does a good job of aerating the substrate, keeping it nice and aerobic. Well guys, you stuck it out until now, so thank you very much for watching. I really enjoyed making this longer form of video, as I feel much gets edited out with the shorter ones. Let me know what you think, and if you like it, I'll absolutely make some more. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.